Okay. Okay. How's everybody today? Good. I'm a little shy, so. This is a little much. I'll give you a bit of an intro. Yeah, okay. Hello everyone, welcome to the welcome to the panel, the Q&A for Christy Swanson. I'm Monica S. Kugler from Rumor Magazine, the associate editor. Now, I'm, bet I'm betting as genre fans, when you think of Christy Swanson, you're thinking of her in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You're maybe thinking of her as Samantha in Wes Craven's Deadly Friend. Nope. But Christy's done a lot of stuff that isn't genre as well. She's done dozens of commercials. She's, she appeared in the 1987 adaptation of Flowers in the Attic, the 1996 comic book film The Phantom. She's had roles in Dude, Where's My Car? <laughs> Hot Shots, the program, guest stints on CSI Miami, Law and Order, mm -hmm. Criminal Intent, Just Shoot Me, and many, many others. She's also taken part in skating with celebrities. Woo! And she even graced the cover of uh, the November 2002 issue of Playboy. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's give a very, very warm festival of beer welcome to Christy Swanson. Thank you. Woo! Guys, but when I'm moderating, a, when I'm moderating a Q&A, I think that these things are for you guys. They're not for me. I'm a journalist. I get to talk to interesting people in the movie biz all the time. But you guys don't. So I have some prepared questions, but I'd rather open the floor up first to you if there's anything you guys have a burning need to ask. So are there any questions out there? I have a question. You have a question? <laughs> sure. <laughs> the ones that are videotaping, am I going to see that on YouTube tomorrow? No. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. I won't swear. If you, if you don't want it up, just say so. It won't That's go up. That's okay. You're a three-way fan, so I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the club, so. <laughs> well, if there are no burning questions right off the top, oh, there's one right there. Was your approach to be the uh, original Buffy in the uh, television series? His question was, was I approached to be the, the Buffy in the TV series? And the answer is, no, I was not. Um, but I think that... Uh, it, because it was about six years after the fact, I think that mm -hmm. um, maybe I was too old or I was off doing movies and I never was offended or hurt or upset by the fact that I wasn't asked. Uh, I was actually really excited by the fact that they would take the movie Buffy and make it a series. I also thought that it was really good for young girls to be able to see a female heroine on TV, you know, sort of like this, the new Nancy Drew kind of thing, you know? So I just thought that that it was a good thing, you know, I, I was never upset by it, so, yeah. It would have been fun to do an episode, though. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the back in the red. Um, did you do your own stunts in the um... In Buffy? Yeah. I did not do all the stunts. I did a lot of them. Um, I did. Uh, I did do all the fighting myself, but the um, the motor. There was some motorcycle stuff that I did not do, and this gymnast did these backflips. <laughs> <laughs> I could lie to you and say I did it, but I didn't. So, um, but no. I but I did do like the flying sidekick, and I did a lot of the fighting myself, which was a lot of fun. I was I was grateful that they allowed me to do that. So. Yep. Yes. Uh, you worked with a Canadian legend in uh, Donald Sutherland. What did yes. you take away from that experience? Oh with yeah. Him? Donald was an absolute charm to work with. I learned a lot from him. Um, he is uh, uh, an incredible actor. He's an incredible person, and and I just adored working with him. He was he would go above and beyond for you if he really loved you and believed in you. You know, like he really would look after you and. He took me under his wing, and one night he, um, I don't know if you understand, in movies sometimes we, when we shoot a scene, they'll shoot like the master of the whole mm -hmm. scene, and then they'll shoot his coverage, and then let him go home so they can bring him in early in the morning, and, and then they'll shoot my, my close-ups later that night. And he came at 3 o'clock in the morning 
he came back to work just to be there for me off camera to mm -hmm. shoot, you know, and he says, you know, you, I have to be there. I don't want them to let me go home. I want to be there. So, and he didn't have to be, and that was very nice. So, I love Donald and Kiefer. <laughs> I love all Canadians. When you uh, did Law and Order, that was basically about Anna Nicole's myths. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, Law and Order uh, playing the Anna Nicole was, uh, it was an interesting thing because it was very fresh. I mean, she, she passed away in February, mm -hmm. and um, I think it was uh, beginning of February. Yeah. And this was shot in, in at the end of March, and I had just had my baby, um, Magnus, and uh, he was about five weeks old, and I went to New York without him, and, um, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a little tough, but um, it was cool to, to play her. Uh, or a character like her, uh, because she she was she was an interesting person. <laughs> Let's just say she was a lot of people all wrapped into one. There was a question in the second row. Uh, since the the Buffy movie, Joss Whedon has become this huge name in show business. At the time, as the writer, were you aware of him? Was he around a lot? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, he was on the set of Buffy every single day from the time we got 5 a.m. till, you know, 9 o'clock at night. He was there all day, all night, and uh, very much involved, um, and, uh, you know, wanted to sort of see it all come to life, and um, I, I really enjoyed working with him. I've heard some stuff, though, you know, that he, he uh, didn't like the movie or something. I don't know. I've, re I've read some weird stuff, but I don't know if it's true, but I really enjoyed working with him. I thought he wrote a really good script. It's right here. Absolutely. Uh, what did they tell you about the character of Buffy? What did they ask you to put into it? Well, they gave me the script, so I was able to, uh, I read the script and I was able to sort of create the character based on that. Um, I, for myself, personally, um, some actors do this, not all of them do, but um, with Buffy, I sort of combined my sister-in-law and my friend Julie <laughs> <laughs> into this Buffy character, you know, sort of the way they talk and, and the way they are, and, and that's kind of how I, I, how I created Buffy. It's kind of stupid, but... <laughs> when, you were, when you were working on the movie, did you ever get the sense that there was something really special there, that it was ever going to blow up like it did? Um, Probably not. I, I don't think uh, you can predict that kind of stuff, you know. And, you know, always, you know, people always want a movie when all the people that are involved in the movie all want it to be, you know, successful. And unfortunately, it wasn't uh, when it was released. And um, it, it was released, I think, in August. And uh, it was up against this movie called Death Becomes Her. And that <laughs> oh, yeah. was like, a, 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 was that the Meryl Streep movie? Yeah. 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 And um, so that movie did very well and kind of killed us, actually. Oh, and, wow. um, and But the fact that it became a cult classic is, is, is uh, really refreshing and cool. And, you know, I'm happy to be a part of it. So, you know, if, if it made y'all laugh, then I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Right here in the front. So can, can you talk a little bit about working on Three Way and with Maeve and Miley and Kathy Shim and Jill Bennett and everyone? Because that yes. show is bloody brilliant. Yes. She's talking about a, um, she's asking me about a web series that I recently did called Three Way, and um, she wants me to talk about it. <laughs> and uh, because I'm just a guest star on the show, I don't really know all the history of the show. Um, but uh, in that show, I play a, a lesbian stalker. <laughs> Excuse me, lipstick lesbian stalker. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get that straight. And, um, and it's a really fun, kooky role, and uh, I'm having a good time doing it. And uh, it's, it's a web series, so you can go on the web. It's called Three Way. Uh, I think it's Three Way TV three, dot. The, the number Three Way TV dot TV. Yeah, I think, I think that's the, right. Yeah, I think you can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but 
it's it's a fun show. It's it's kooky and crazy. So. We figured out a way that they don't have to kill you off. Oh, you did. Yeah, you all you, all, all they have to do, you have to tell Maeve that they have to put you on some kind of antipsychotic medication that only half works. That's really then you're not <laughs> <laughs> then you're not. I like that idea. <laughs> yes, right there in the brown shirt. I think that's the first scene you had, was it Mr. Boogity, the Disney film? Oh, and wow. I first got to know you in uh, Deadly Friend. And <laughs> can you tell us about the basketball scene? Yes. Um, he brought up Mr. Boogity is a movie that I did um, Family in 1985. Whoa. I think it was 85 or 86. 86. <laughs> you are correct, it was released in 86, but we shot it in 85. But um, we shot it at the end of 85. But uh, Sean Astin, who's here, um, I don't know if you know who Sean Astin is. Yeah. His father yes. was in that movie. <laughs> cool. And, uh, John. Yeah, John Astin. Um, so, to tell you about the basketball scene in the Wes Craven Deadly Friend movie. Yeah. Um, that was gross. Um, <laughs> there's a funny story. I mean, I don't know you. I don't know if Wes even remembers this because it was a hundred years ago. But um, the uh, Anne Ramsey was the actress that I had to kill, and uh, she's the the woman from Throw Mama from the Train. Yeah, very, very funny actress, and um, she's very big and different looking and um, they, she had to have a stunt double and they hired a, a man to double her and um, originally I was going to throw her through the front door and she goes through the front door and that's how she dies and by the time they got around to shooting the scene they had you know spent so many hours on set and waiting 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 the stunt man had grown five o'clock shadow. <laughs> so when they shot it, you could tell that it was a man. <laughs> and so they then they decided, well, it's not gory enough anyway, so we're just going to reshoot the killing of Ann Ramsey. And uh, they decided, well, we'll just have that basketball roll on in, and, and she can pick it up and throw it at her face, and her head will explode from the basketball. And uh, I remember this, the uh, prop guys and the special effects guys, they went to uh, some grocery store or somewhere, I don't know, and they got like a cow's brain or something and put that in. And, mm -hmm. uh, some, I, they got this gross stuff to put in the head and they, they exploded it. It was weird. What was it like working with all the legends with the figure skating? That was cool. Um, the figure skating show was, uh, very special to me because I had grown up uh, being a figure skating fan. Uh, my brother was a figure skater and uh, very good actually and he competed till he was about 16 and then quit but he skated with you know great guys like Christopher Bowman and uh, Todd Sand and, um, but he, he quit at that age and um, so I knew like Ty and Randy, you know, from the 70s, yeah. and, like, all these people, and I was like, wow, these people are so cool, you know, I just really looked up to them, and, and I had a great time working with them, and, um, and I think they had fun too. It was fun. Did I watch any of Buffy, she asked. Um, of the show, and the truth is, is that um, I didn't, uh, <laughs> and it's not, uh, I don't know why I didn't, I think, I, well I know why, I'm, I don't watch much TV, like TV shows, I'm more of a Discovery Channel person, <laughs> um, and uh, Animal Planet, <laughs> Yay! Yay! And ID and like weird stuff like that, um, but uh, uh, I did see the very, very first episode, which was a two-hour movie, actually. It was called The Pilot. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I did see a little bit of that. And Welcome I thought, oh, to that. Awesome. You know, but <laughs> I never got, like, hooked on it or anything. <laughs> Are you yourself a horror fan? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting question because, you know, like, being an actor, I know that it's all fake, and I know it's you know it's not real. It's all you know fake blood and blah blah blah. But there's some movies I can't watch. Like I get scared. 
you know. Um, <laughs> I just do, and I can't watch them. And then there's other movies I can totally watch, and it doesn't bother me. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fan or not. I mean, I can get scared. <laughs> I mean, I did Flowers in the Attic, which wasn't really a horror movie. It was more of a psychological thriller. Mm. And uh, I had bad nightmares while I was making that movie. That I was, like, locked in my apartment, and I couldn't get out. <laughs> it was weird. I think there was a question over there somewhere. Yeah, just of all the projects you've worked on, which has been the most memorable for you? Um, that's a good question. It's, <laughs> some people ask me that question in a different way, like what's your favorite movie you've ever made or whatever. Um, and the truth is, is that I don't ha I mean, they're all memorable um, for all different reasons, and they're all my favorites for all different reasons. Um, you know, so you, you take a movie like... Uh, a good example would be like uh, Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. <laughs> Not a great movie. Okay, you know, it's, it's, it's out there. And but I had the best time making that movie. Like we, I laughed every day all day long because the cast was just so funny. You know, like so that was memorable for me in that regard. The Phantom memorable because I spent all this time in Thailand in the jungle and Australia and you know like I. It, so it's it's all. I don't know. It's all different for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, what, what do you remember from this, from this time you did a higher learning? Um, what was your experience like on that? Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, I only so heard I, higher I, learning. What, what was the experience like working on higher learning? Um, higher learning uh, was an interesting movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was very interesting. Uh, uh, the director, he did Boys in the Hood, and he was uh, very popular at the time, and uh, very good director, very good writer. Um, and it, I mean, I had a good time on the movie. Um, sometimes I didn't, just because of the nature of the, the storyline, and sometimes I had days where it was a little depressing, <laughs> you know? But, um, but then I, I did have fun. Everybody was, was very professional and very good, and um, all great actors, and you know, we shot in LA, so it, it, that was kind of boring, but you know, I had, I had a good time, and, and we had a big earthquake in the middle of it, and the Northridge quake, and, oh, yeah. you know, uh, but I mean, I had a good time, you know. It was a long movie. The first cut was like three and a half hours long, and he had to shorten it down, so, but I thought it turned out well. Yes, at the back. Um, excuse me. You just mentioned that uh, Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag wasn't a very good movie. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> when, you, when you're filming that, do you sense that? And does it make it that much harder to go to work every day? Or is that just part of the profession? No, you, you know what? You, you just don't know when you're making a movie because um, I'm just an actor. That's all I do is I, I go there and I, I do my part and play my role and have fun or don't have fun, whatever, you know, and, and it has its days and blah, blah, blah. Um, I have zero control over uh, the, the final product, you know, and um, you could take a, a brilliant film and put the wrong music underneath it and it just makes it bad, you know, it's, I mean, there's just no telling if you're going to be making a good movie or not. Uh, the, I mean, there's, a, there's an old story about um, uh, uh, the Bonnie and Clyde, was it Bonnie and Clyde? Uh, do you know the movie I'm talking about? Faye Dunaway and uh, yeah, Faye Dunaway Warren, and, and well, um, Warren, yeah, Warren Beatty. Warren yeah. Beatty. And that movie came out. It was released and it tanked at the movie theater. Like nobody went and saw it. So Warren Beatty took the movie back and he re-edited it and re-released it, and it was a huge success. So it, it could be in the editing. It could be anything. So you never know. You just don't know. You just hope. <laughs> Yes, in the striped shirt at the back. Um, I just wanted to know, um, what were the signs like for Ferris Bueller? I was always interested like how they ended up getting those people to just have those blank expressions, and what did they send out looking for those people? They, you mean in the classroom? In the classroom. <laughs> I don't know. You'd, you'd have to ask the uh, John Hughes these questions, but this is all that I know about that scene. Um, that scene was not originally my scene. Um, I had auditioned for the movie, and it was this girl on the phone, talking on some payphone, and um, 
and I got this phone call that when they were in Chicago filming, they shot my scene with some other girl. So like, I had been hired, right? So he goes, that's okay, that's okay, I'm writing you a new role. And I said, oh, thanks, you know, that's nice, you know. So he wrote me this new role, and I got to work, and he goes, you have to say this. And I went, what? <laughs> that's saying what? <laughs> and I was like, so I had to memorize this big, long line, and, um, and that's really all I know, the history of that particular scene. Was, you know, I lucked out, actually, at the end of the day, because uh, it was a good, it was a good, uh, good character. Good, you know, it was funny. <laughs> so. Yes, right there. I wasn't working with Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler's great. He's just, um, he's a little, uh, he's very dry, sense of humor, a little reserved and quiet, um, uh, but uh, extremely funny and very nice, very um, generous. So I enjoyed working with Adam. I know you did uh, quite a few commercials when you were very, very young, mm -hmm. but somehow you've managed to avoid the pitfalls that plague a lot of children who start out acting very young. What was your secret? How did you manage to avoid the pitfalls? Um, <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> well, well you've, managed to, you've managed to carry your career from, from being a child in commercials straight, how through, into it, straight through into adulthood. Yeah, and I you'd mean, be working I don't, steadily. I don't know exactly how to answer that. This is just my own sort of like stupid theory. <laughs> I think that because I was never famous as a child, that it was a little easier to sort of stay alive in the business as an adult. Um, I think that some children that are famous have a harder time transitioning uh, into being adult actors. Uh, that's the only thing that I can really, you know, figure out about that. <laughs> and the other thing I wanted to ask is you've worked sort of equally in movies and in television. Do you prefer one over the other? Um, I used to. I don't anymore, but um, when I was younger, I used to think that uh, doing a series was uh, doing a TV series would be terrible. I don't want to do a TV series because then I have to play the same character over and over and over every year, day after day, you know, and that's just going to get boring. And um, the truth is, is that uh, I think that TV series is good now. And they're, they, they're not as, they don't last as long anymore as they used to, so. But I always like making no because it was more creative for me because then I could, um, you know that there's a beginning and you know that there's an end and it's going to end and then you get to throw that character away and go on to the next one. So that's why I always thought I wanted to just make movies, but I like both. <laughs> and now web series is fun. <laughs> <laughs> the world is changing. It's right there in the white shirt. What were your thoughts on the ending of Deadly Planet? How would that do? <laughs> like I said before, I'm just the actor. <laughs> I have no control. <laughs> it's funny that you brought that up because that means that you have a keen eye and you saw something that what that wasn't right. And what wasn't right about it is that we actually had an ending, and I forget how it ended originally. We went back and did a reshoot um, so, uh, several months later. So that was all added on later. And I had the robot head and, uh, you know, it was weird. Whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, can I give you your money back? <laughs> I'll pay your cable bill for a month. <laughs> Yes, over the end. Christy, in the Buffy movie, is there something you would have liked to have uh, done more in that, you, in that character that you uh, didn't get the chance to do because this was a movie? Instead of um, would I have liked to have done more in the film? Yeah, like, you know. There's a lot that we shot that you didn't see. Um, you know, there's, there's what always... What ended up in the cutting room floor you wish <laughs> yeah, no, I thought that they did a good job of it, you know. Um, I mean, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm in almost every scene in that film, and <laughs> I was on the set every day. It must um, have been tiring. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I really enjoyed it. I had a good time, and I thought it turned out, you know, it's a cute movie. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yes? 
watch a movie for the first time that I was in and I, I have my own vision or you know my own <laughs> thing that I think it's gonna look like and then I see it so I don't really get to enjoy the movie I I'm watching the experience rather than you know I go oh I had a cold that day I didn't feel well <laughs> in that scene and you know whatever like I just everything is sort of a flashback and then I don't really get to enjoy it as an actual movie till maybe the second or third time of seeing it um, and yes there are a lot of uh, not a lot of movies, but there's a few that uh, that I don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Uh, oh, there was this horrible movie that I made a uh, hundred years ago called Dream Trap, and uh, I don't think it was ever released. But <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> on the net. Yeah, it happens. You can't do everything perfect. So. <laughs> yes. Have you thought about getting uh, behind the camera and doing anything like writing, directing, or have you? Um, I I did my own little pro I, I did direct a movie once um, that uh, was about my father, uh, and um, it, it's about a thirty minute movie, and uh, and that kind of gave me the bug. Every time I work, I always have people telling me, you should be a producer, you you know, just because the way I am, I guess, as a person, and so they just think I should be a producer. So I do have a project. It's actually a figure skating movie um, that I have in the works right now. I didn't write it. I'm not a writer at all. I'm more of an idea person. Um, so right now we're just trying to raise the money for it, and that's like, you know, it could be 10 years from now. You know, who knows? So, you know, I... I'm not like, because I'm a new mom, so really all my energy goes into that right now. But, um, you know, if the opportunity comes then, and somebody wants me to direct or produce, then I will. And I have a reality series that I'm a producer on, so I don't, I don't really do much as a producer. What is that? <laughs> what? What is, what is the series that you've got going? It's a, it's a show about um, Hollywood moms. It's called Mommy Wood right now, but um, it's, not, uh, it's not sold yet, so they're just trying to, you know, shop it around and see if anybody wants to see Hollywood Moms. <laughs> Is that interesting enough? I don't know. Maybe. But moms are a hot topic at the moment, so, you know, you never know. Mom rock. Yeah, moms are cool. But uh, this is really more about, you know, uh, sort of to show that you might think because I'm an actor that maybe my life is glamorous, but it really isn't. And so it, it just kind of, you know, I don't have like a million nannies around me. I don't even have a nanny. I am a nanny. So uh, it sort of shows the, the, the trials and struggles of being a mom and working and being an actor or a personality, whatever, you know. So I don't know. I'd rather watch The Deadliest Catch. But yeah. Yay. There you go. Yeah. It's a woman with the crab as far as goes, do you have oh. any projects on the go right now? I don't. Um, you know, last year, uh, I mean, my baby's now a year and a half. So last year we had the writer's strike, so really nothing went on last year. Um, and this year I have, um, I'm, just, I'm just sort of like, just now getting, now that he's like started, he, I have him in a little school now, and so now I'll have a little more freedom to maybe go back to work, but I've really just been doing the mom thing, because I, I really like, that's my favorite role. <laughs> so, yeah. Are you gonna put your uh, son into acting at all, or let him choose? That's a good question. My mom, um, you know, when he was born, you know, grandma just thinks he's just the cutest thing in the world, right? So <laughs> Put him in commercials. He has to do print and model. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Mom, I really don't want to. You know, like, he's a baby. Just let him be a baby. <laughs> no, he's just so beautiful. You have to do And I'm like, she's <laughs> blessed. Okay, just to appease you, I'll make a phone call to a friend, you know. So I called my friend, and they said, well, um, actually, they don't really hire, like, single 
babies anymore. If he had like two twins, then mm. he'd be working mm. all the time. You know, and I'm like, okay, goodbye. Now I can tell my mom that and then get out of this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no. Unless he wants to do it, then I'll let him try it if he wants to, but I'm not going to push it. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to be into sports. That's what I think. Yay, sports. Yeah, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. So, so as a new mom and somebody in the public eye, does that make you a little bit more cautious or protective of, of Magnus? I wouldn't know the answer to that question because I don't know the other side of it. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a mama bear. I mean, I I'm protective <laughs> anyway. You know, um, he's my little baby, but. Uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with being in the public eye. I mean, I take him out to, to places, and um, he's had his picture in, in some magazines and stuff. I'm, I'm not, I don't, like, hide him or anything. <laughs> I don't, you know, do the Michael Jackson. Those or whatever that he puts on his kids. Don't dangle him over balcony. No. Yeah, he put masks on him. So... <laughs> He's too cute to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yes. Um, what was it like working with Paul Rubens? Oh. <laughs> Paul Rubens is um, probably one of my most favorite people in the world. Uh, he is um, just the nicest, sweetest, most mellow, coolest guy that you'll ever meet. And he's really funny. And um, and he's odd, and um, he's uh, eccentric, um, but he's just the coolest. I just adore him, and I love working with him. Hmm? Did he ever do Kiwi on set, or was he just all in the role? Because his death scene was he's good. He's just himself. I mean, he. I don't remember him doing Kiwi on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this thing, no. <laughs> and he's really good. He's funny. Like when April Fools comes around every year, uh -oh. I'll get a phone call from him. <laughs> he always plays a joke on me, and I always fall for it. Like I, I never remember. Oh, it's April Fools today. You know, <laughs> it's his favorite day of the year. <laughs> That's awesome. And he sends good Christmas cards. <laughs> but we'll go how, uh, how the guy that played the uh, villain. Rutger Hauer. Yeah. What was he like? Yeah. Um, I've seen him Rutger Hauer uh, is, uh, how would I, he's a very nice man. Um, but he's, I don't know if he's a method actor or what, but Cause he just was, he, he was just really, there. he really gets into his role and, um, and he has fun doing it and, um, you know, he's, He's very serious, but he's very playful. Uh, I don't know. He's kind of a free spirit, and mm -hmm. I think he's cool. He's definitely a really good actor. I yeah. Think he's a very good actor. Yes, in the hat. Um, all people are just yelling out names. What about Luke Perry? Yeah. <laughs> he's a great kisser. <laughs> uh, Luke Perry is uh, a great guy, really fun. Um, I haven't seen him in eons. Uh, I don't even. Uh, what's he? Do? I think he's doing 90210 now or something. Um, it's like a comeback show. But yeah. Um, gosh, I'd love to see him again. I haven't seen him in a really long time. He was great. The blue coat star. Uh, yes, in the orange. The orange. Uh, given the opportunity, what actor or actress would you like to work with? Why? <coughs> The one actor, well, there's a, there's a couple. I mean, I'd love to work with them all because they're all cool. Um, they're all different and interesting people. Um, I always wanted to work with, uh, well, I can't now, but J uh, Jack Lemmon. I always uh. thought he was fabulous and, and always wanted to work with him. Robbie Benson and, um, yeah. and Matt, Matt Dillon. <laughs> he was cool. I think he's a really good actor. And, I don't know. There's a million of them. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's so many that are great. Um, Louise Fletcher was one of my favorites to work with. In the middle of the way? Uh, you did a number of movies with Charlie Sheen. Pardon? Uh, Charlie. Yeah. And I read somewhere that you two didn't get too well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
here comes the dirt. You read somewhere that Charlie and I didn't get along. I think what you read was an article that Charlie did in Movie Line magazine. Um, I don't even know if that magazine exists anymore, but <laughs> he, he did do an article where he didn't talk very nicely about anybody, really. It wasn't just me. It was kind of like everyone. I don't know what his deal was that day. But um, <laughs> when we made uh, The Chase, we got along great. Like, we had fun. We were stuck in a car together, like, for four yeah. weeks, you know? Like, we were, we had a great time. Um, I, I don't know. I think that he just had a bad day that day when he did that article. <laughs> but, like, I don't have any problems with him, and I don't think he has any with me, so. We'll squash that rumor. <laughs> uh, Christy, what was your what was your initial reaction once you saw the the whole OJ thing um, progress through, and then the movie was the movie was shot not too far behind that? Uh, what did you were you spooked by that? What movie? Was, Chase. Oh, the Chase and OJ. Yeah. OJ Simpson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I remember, I remember the trial and everything. When I first saw the movie, there was a lot of, was a lot of parallels between that. I was like, wow, it's just, just kind of like weird. Did you? I never really thought of it that way, but I did have an interesting thing happen to me personally. After I finished the chase, I was driving through Beverly Hills in my BMW, and I was on the phone, and I was going through this residential area and I got pulled over by an unmarked Police. cop car. All I saw was a little red light in the window, you know? Mm. And this cop came out and he had civilian clothes on. And I looked up at him and it, just recently there had been all these killings up mm. in Mulholland where people were posing as cops or whatever. And so I immediately thought he was that guy. And so <laughs> he says, driver's license and registration. And I was like, Oh my god, and I just took off. <laughs> he had a badge, but I thought it was fake. You know, he's in just regular clothes. He's not in a cop car, so you know, I thought he was gonna kill me. So I just took off. He goes running to his car and he starts chasing me through Beverly Hills. And I call 911 immediately and I decide I'm gonna go to directly to the police station because I know I'll be safe there. And, um, and they said, oh, he's already called in. Please pull over. Um, and I was like, no, I need help. I need people to come for me. You know? and, and it was like, oh, my God. And so seven black and whites show up oh. uh, around my car. It was something like out of a movie. And I just finished this movie called The Chase. And I was like, what's going on? This is weird. So um, they surrounded my car. And um, as it turned out, should not have been pulling me over. Um, he got in big trouble, <laughs> and, um, and they let me go. So. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I was white as a ghost for like three days. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this question here. Uh, did you think the officer had run your uh, plate and found out who you were? <laughs> no, he, his, his, he, what he said was that, he, he's, he goes, I didn't know what you, I just saw some girl talking on the phone. That's what he said, and I think that he was pulling me over because I was a girl, and I think he maybe does that a lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what some friends said that worked in the police force. But yeah, I was like, I live in Beverly Hills. I don't want trouble with you guys, you know. And so, but I mean, I could have actually sued him for it, but I didn't. <laughs> it's it's the American way. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't partake. Yes. Uh, yeah, you mentioned earlier how you traveled a bit, like with that. Um, when you go working in other places, do you get to see much of them? And if so, do you have any particularly favorite places that you have taken to? Yeah, the, the one thing about being an actor and, and having the career that I've had is, has taken me all over the world and the, all these great places. And um, uh, Thailand and Australia were, were fabulous. I mean, it was really a lot of fun. Um, Amsterdam, I worked uh, for about two months, but that was really depressing um, <laughs> because I didn't see the sun for like two months. It was just gray all the time. Um, and but uh, it's still a beautiful country or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I just I I love that I've been able to go to all these great places. My favorite place in the world is Africa, 
and um, and I've uh, I've worked in uh, Cape Town, and you know it's cool. I like that. We talked a little earlier about your most memorable role. What would you say your most challenging one was? My most challenging role is motherhood, I think. <laughs> yeah. And the best. Uh, it's both. Um, mm, what was my most challenging? Or the most difficult? Physically? I think higher learning was the most difficult emotionally, um, just because of the subject matter that I had to deal with. And it was very kind of a downer a lot every day. And sometimes when you're doing a drama every day, you're like, God, I wish I was doing a comedy. This sucks, you know. <laughs> um, maybe the next movie I'll do a comedy. And then when you're doing a comedy, you're like, wait, I want to do a drama. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, it's funny that way. But I, I think that that was probably emotionally the hardest. And physically the hardest, I've had a few that were physically the hardest, but I think skating with celebrities was the most physically <laughs> the hardest. Yeah, how's definitely. your channel? <laughs> yeah. Now, when you're channel. on a film that's very emotionally draining, I know I've talked to other actresses who have sort of rituals for kind of breaking free of that at the end of the shooting day. Is there anything that you personally do to kind of... To not bring get, your work to not home bring it, you? To not bring it home to get out of the mindset? I don't know if I do that on a daily basis. I, I think that... Um, I'm, I'm kind of intense when I work, and I, I'm kind of really into it, like, 24-7. Um, I don't really let it go until the movie's over. When the movie's over, it takes me about two weeks to sort of get back into life, because it's so intense, intense, every day, every day, and you have all these people around you all day long, and now, all of a sudden, you're at home by yourself, and, and you're like, oh my god, the laundry's piled up, and you know, there's so much shit. You just, you just kind of like, you just kind of, I don't know, I do. I just kind of veg. I don't want to go anywhere or do anything for like two weeks. So. We have about five minutes left in the Q&A, so if there's any last minute questions, this is the time to sneak them in. What's your favorite food? <laughs> oh, now you got me hungry. <laughs> Sorry. I know it is lunchtime. Um, I like everything. I, I'm not like my least favorite. I think is Thai food, um, mm. and I think that's because I spent so much time in Thailand. And it just kind of <laughs> um, and sometimes we didn't know. It's like mystery meat. We weren't like, <laughs> like, dog or buffalo or something. Or something. <laughs> or buffalo. So um, I don't know. I like everything, and I love to cook. I cook. I cook dinner every night. Nice. Yeah. Or we barbecue, actually. I prep it, he cues it, so. <laughs> do you like doing conventions like this? Do you do a lot of them? Have any weird stories to share? <laughs> yeah, I have a weird story to share. At the Chiller Theater uh, in, in Jersey, there was this guy that came up, and he had, um, and to answer your question, I do enjoy these, and I, I probably average, I've done maybe five, and, and it's like twice a year I've been doing it. Um, but uh, <laughs> this guy came up at the Chiller Theater and he had a mask on and he had this blue tights and leotard and a cape and he had this belt and he had um, tidy whiteies <laughs> um, and, and they were stained brown on the oh. Oh. And, uh, oh. and he had with duct tape a big T and a big D, all in duct tape, like this silver tape on it. I'm like, who the hell are you? He's like, I'm the turd burglar. And I was like, oh my God. I laughed so hard, oh my God. He's the turd burglar. Wow. TV, yeah, TV. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot, Monica. What is it about Christy Swanson's career that Rue Moore wanted to uh, get a hold of her for you here? You know, I think. I mean, there's, there's several people at Rue Morgue who are very big Buffy fans, both the original film and of the TV series. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we, we know that there are a lot of fans out there who want to meet her for the role she's done in horror. So, and she, like she said, she only does a couple conventions a year. Mm -hmm. So she's not one of those celebrities that's at every show that you, you're going to go to. So, you know, those are the kind of people we like to bring in, the people who you're not going to meet, you know, every year at Chiller Theater or, you know, the Fangoria convention or any of the other cons that are going on. I've never been to a Fangoria. <laughs>
<laughs> We're more fun, fun anyway. <laughs> what? We're more fun anyway. This one's more fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, what was it like posing for Playboy? <laughs> like, what's that like? Are there like a lot of people milling around while the shoot Hell is going no. on? <laughs> Very private. It was cool because um, Playboy was something that, you know, you really mold that one over. You know, you're like, should I, should I, should I, should I, you know. But um, I, uh, I, I, I was able to have full control over the whole thing, which made it very nice. Um, I was able to uh, artist, be artistic with it, and uh, I was able to choose my own photographer, and we were able to create our own scenario and shoot anywhere in the world that we wanted to shoot. It would send us, so it was really just him and me, and that's it, and a makeup artist. No, I didn't wear makeup. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yes. Are you going to do anything fun for yourself while you're in Toronto, or are you just here for the convention? I am. Well, we're we're having fun because the whole family's here. Um, Lloyd is here. Magnus is here, and um, Lloyd's parents are here, and uh, Lloyd's two other boys are here. So it's kind of a whole family weekend that we made of it. So it's nice. I don't know. If I, I mean, I think they're doing the CN Tower today. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be here. <laughs> we have to wrap this up now, but I've got one final question for you. Buffy was obviously a chick who, who kicked a lot of ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that said, if you could play the role of any female hero or superhero, what character would you most like to take a stab at? When I was a child, I always had an infatuation with could be long stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would show her more on TV. That, she was rad. Um, but uh, she, was a, she was a superpower girl, right? Yep. Kind of? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. Who would I want to be? Mm, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to answer that one. I wish I had a really clever answer, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you like me to play? There, I'll just, I'll just reverse psychology. Well, I think that's almost a better question. Than you yeah. Can't go wrong with Supergirl. Supergirl. Black Canary. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Supergirl, Helen Slater. Hel yeah, yeah. Helen. Yeah, yeah. But that was a really bad movie. Was it? <laughs> it was bad. Hillary Clinton. No. <laughs> That's a good one. You're a better talker. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, it's time to wrap this up and let the next people get into the room, so please give them a Thank you. Woo! Yeah, I'm going to the booth, or I might grab some pizza. <laughs> My bad. Christy will be back up in her booth.